it really is remarkable where this guy was like four months ago to where he is now. The number is pre um, AHL demotion put on waivers five, two and six, three point nine, four, eight, six, two, one shutout. And then post 16, four and one, 2.519.12 and two shutouts. So nominated for the Masterton Trophy. Yeah, it's crazy. The run, what he's been through. You know, um, myself as well, I touched on it before. Yeah, I got nominated twice. One year in Nashville, I was the backup. I didn't play a ton of minutes with Pekka Rene. Um, I got nominated. Then another year in St. Louis when I was leading the league and everything. Um, it was awesome. It's a cool honor. And for Samsonov, just to see... His struggle, I guess for me, it was the way he handled it. I, I guess I struggled with a little bit because I used to internalize things. I never wanted to show weakness. I would go where he like vo vocalized it, right? He was very open with the media. And, and I feel like during those struggles, he would consistently go out. They'd interview him. And it was like, this is like a car crash. Why are we interviewing <laughs> this guy? He's pouring it out there. But now looking back on it, I think for me on the other side now in media, I'm like reflecting on it. And I'm like, it was great. This is, it showed the human side of him. The fans got to see it, what he was struggling with. They could understand what he was going through. And now you look at what he's come through and everybody is behind him. Everyone believes in him. And it's helped him, I think, mentally get over this hurdle of stopping pucks and finding a rhythm, knowing that the fans have his back. They're not booing him anymore for playing bad. They know what he went through. So I think it's a great sign for professional hockey because so many times guys get interviewed and they just give you nothing, right? Pucks in deep. We played well. Penalty was good, blah, blah, blah. Where he went out there and he wore it on his sleeve. And now, you know, you're seeing the fruit of that as he – uh gets nominated for this and he's been absolutely rock solid and uh i was hard on him but i can say i'm he's playing really well right now and i'm excited to see him because i think he is your uh game one starter for sure oh for sure and we're gonna get into that conversation but it is uh perseverance personified like it, it's absolutely wild how he starts a season like that an afterthought people want him gone to all of a sudden he's going to be the game one starter for the toronto maple leafs and i think for a lot of young goalies a lot of you know, young future players in this league, I think you can learn a thing or two about the Ilya Samsonov story and, and you know, sticking with things and staying with things. And the mental reset, I think, was huge. Like I, I just think that was so pivotal, not only for this season, but for his career to clean his mind. And ever since, I mean, this is no longer a small sample size. It's a pretty long sample size. I mentioned the numbers, uh, what, 16, 4, and 1. Like, it, it's... It's substantial enough where I think he is very, very deserving of this award, taking nothing away from the rest of the league. Each team has a nomination, but like, I think it's the Masterton Trophy personified. I've been saying this for the last couple months, and uh, it's it's really epic how it's come to this for Ilya Samsonov. Yeah, no, obviously what he's been through. There's always different storylines each year with different teams, different players. And for me, for Samsonov, I think because it was so open like the whole league knew about it and it was it was hard to not see it right it wasn't like he was struggling in silence right it was out there and the way he's come back is amazing it's not like he's come back he's always found a way to win games which I will give him credit for even times when he wasn't playing as well as he should have been you know he found a way to win games and I think there was that run when Ridley Gregg was out that obviously was a huge moment for the Toronto Maple Leafs but when Joseph Wall went down and he came back and he stepped in. I, I also believe Martin Jones did a really great job in helping this team, you know, kind of weather that, you know, that period when everybody was out, everyone was struggling. It was a, it was a tricky time where he came back and now he is your number one guy. He's given this team a lot of confidence too. Cause when you don't have a goalie making saves for you, it is very, it drags you down into the dirt. So I think for him, this is a great award and for the Toronto Maple Leafs this is a great sign headed into this time of the year because he's played a lot of meaningful games as of late and I don't think that's going to stop and if he has been off a little bit the next game seems like he bounces back right away so my only take on the Maston trophy in general I think it's goofy that every team gets a master nominee and, and this is nothing away from you you said you were nominated twice in your career and maybe it's not even that I think it's the fact that they have to pick one sole winner of the Masterton Trophy. Like, my ideology is, like, what makes your story any different or worse than mine? Like, I, I just think you select a group of players that you think are worthy of this honor, this award, and you give it to them. I, I've always thought the way they disperse to Masterton has been goofy. I mean, I should rephrase and say, yeah, there's probably a lot of candidates in the league, but, like, I just I don't think they need to single out one person and give it to them. I don't know if you agree with that. No, I, I don't think it has to be one per se, but I also don't think it needs to be everyone per team. Agreed. Like when yeah. I was, when I was nominated in Nashville, I kind of was embarrassed almost. Cause I, I didn't really play a ton of games. Renee 
had struggled a little bit and I had played well. Like it wasn't like I had done anything that was like awesome. Like I, you know, yeah. some guys I was like when Brian Boyle wanted to come back from cancer, exactly. or like these different players have done with where I was like, I literally just did my job. I, I don't think I'm anything special. I literally shouldn't be given an award for that when you're categorized with these other players that have done something that's actually really, you know, like been through something. Right. So I think what Samsonov has gone through this year is like the epitome of this award where I don't think you need 32 guys nominated for it, but maybe you get a few select group that, you know, win the award or whatever it is. I, I agree with you there, Nick. I would just love to see like a, a group acknowledgement, if you will. Cause again, I don't think you should put any individual case on a pedestal. I mean, this, this award speaks for itself. So congratulations to Ilya Samsonov. Hell, I'd even go as far as to say he wins this award. Like I, I really do truly feel where we're at in a society in 2024, taking nothing away from, um, you know, the other candidates for this award. Mental health is no joke. And from what Ilya Samsonov has come back from in late December, it's downright incredible. It's been a remarkable story. So kudos to uh, Ilya Samsonov. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, you got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.